Hello there, everybody. Welcome back. You're with me, old China boy, and today we're doing something different. We're playing some Magic 2015. Now, um, I played Magic before, especially this game. Now, this computer here that I'm playing on has never loaded up the game ever, so it's completely a brand new um, data and all that. Um, so. The only thing that I have on here is the expansion, which the expansion was given to me by free just because I had the game before the expansion was released. I had it for so long, so they gave it to me, basically. So let's go ahead and start with the basics and everything. So I'll probably try to go through this as quickly as possible. I'm just leaving... Then they show all the tutorial stuff because you choose your deck and stuff. Unless I can skip that all, I don't know if I can. And these people have probably never played Magic, so uh, we'll just go through the tutorial to also teach them. And playing on Planeswalker difficulty, which are people for for people who actually played the game before. But here's little lore. You are Planeswalker. Planeswalker draw mana from the lands they visited and use that energy to summon creatures to defeat their rivals. In the ga magic game, you will use your creatures to attack your opponent or to block an attack. Welcome to magic. You and your opponents take the role of planeswalkers, powerful sorcerers who can magically travel between planes of existence. These are the two main characters of this actual um, game, by the way. Um, Lilana and Goroth, I think it's pronounced. I don't have a... <laughs> you don't have a freaking um, pronouncer or anything half the time, so... To win, you must defeat your opponent by bringing his life total down from 20 to 0. To do this, you will use a variety of tools, represented in the game as a deck of shuffled cards. All players have their own decks to play with. We call this your library. I don't know why I don't just call it deck. <laughs> I guess to avoid being the same trope as every other card game. At the beginning of the game, each player draws seven cards. If you don't like your opening hand, you have the option of redrawing, called a mulligan. To take a closer look at your cards, zoom in. As you can see, magic cards have many symbols and words. We'll explain what they mean as the game continues. Uh, some are flavor text and some are actual things you need to pay attention to. Like for this guy down here, that's all flavor text. It's just a description about the creature. To begin playing magic, you must complete a series of quests. AKA get callers. Okay, put lands. <laughs> yeah, see, that's flavor text for you. For the first quest, you're playing a green deck. Green's specialty is large, powerful creatures. Your opponent is Crimson Mage. After the tutorial, we get to pick out of a various combination of two color decks, each having their uses. I think we get to play test each one before we. Before we actually have to choose, so to we can see what we want. Or summon creatures, you're gonna need some resources. In Magic, the main resource, mana, comes from lands. Every turn, you may play a land from your hand. Once you have enough lands on the battlefield, you'll have the mana you need to cast spells, including summoning creatures. Play a land now. And we can only put one land a turn, so. Since you don't have enough mana to cast any spells yet, we'll pass the turn to Crimson Mage. I have it set to auto resolve if there's anything I can do. Will also play lands to build the resources he needs to cast spells. And I also have it set to actually, if I do have something to, to, I can do, it will give me time to actually do it. I won't have seconds to now, respond. Now, cast a spell. Crimson Mage has summoned a creature. Attacking with creatures, like Crazed Goblin, is the major way players defeat their opponents. 
On every creature card, the bottom corner displays its power and toughness. So his creature is like a 1-1, one, one. yeah. Power is the amount of damage a creature deals in combat. Toughness is the amount of damage needed to destroy this creature. And between each player's turn, all damage is removed. Unless said otherwise. Every spell has a mana cost. To summon Crazed Goblin, it costs Crimson Mage a single red mana. It's represented by this symbol. So you gotta remember the symbols for everything. The attacks of able to, to so or tap his land to pay to cast this spell. Tapped cards are turned sideways. Yep. Mana costs can be more complex than crazed goblins. Summoning this creature will cost four mana, and two of the mana must be green. Now that is a pretty cool system, I will admit. Magic has actually gotten a good system for when a controlling gains um control of a creature. It can't attack or do anything that requires tapping. This is called summoning sickness. These creatures will have a dizzy look to them. But we can expect the crazed goblin to attack on Crimson Mage's next turn. In other words, if it doesn't require to be tapped to cast an ability that it has, it can still use it. But yeah, in terms of card games that I play, because I've played a lot of card games, I will admit the system about the magic is actually extremely done well. It's our turn. Let's summon Colonian Tusker. To yeah. Summon this big guy, put another land down, then summon him. This creature's power Very simple. and toughness are 3-3. Three, three. More than a match for that crazed goblin. Let's pass the turn. When we attack, but next turn, he has to attack with his goblin no matter what, so we can stop him with our Tusker. Without them um, actually the losing anything. Will play a land and then attack us with the crazed goblin. The crazed goblin has to attack because its rules say it must. Which when you play a friendly game, you guys might forget that every now and again just because it's a little game between friends. But on the official rules and stuff like this. When a creature attacks, it taps and moves forward. But on official now games, you have, you have no choice. To respond with <laughs> creatures you want to block with. You happen to have a Yeah. You know. We can block with our creature whenever we're attacked. If Crimson Mage's attacking creatures aren't blocked, you will take damage. Your Colonian Tusker can keep you safe. Creatures with summoning sickness can block. Block the crazed goblin! Which, you have 20 health to start with, and if you uh, go specific deck routes, you can actually increase that crazily. So yeah, you basically change their attack to your monster, and your monster also attacks them when you do this. Um, while you can target monsters specifically if you want. So you target either the player or the monsters to destroy whichever you want to destroy. During the combat damage step, each creature deals damage equal to their power. This time, these creatures will deal damage to each other at the same time. Crazed Goblin will die, and the Colonian Tusker will survive. The only time they don't do it at the same time is if a creature has first attack, so one will attack first no matter what, or if it has double attack, which means you'll attack first, then it will attack a second time. So say you got a 1-1 one, one fighting against a um, one, two, or two, two. At the end of every turn, each creature heals. Any damage dealt to them is removed. You don't have to keep track of damage from turn to turn. Um, so, f so you have one, one against a two, two or something, and ha your one, one has double attack. You get into fighting with the two units. Your unit would deal one damage first, and then it would do one damage to again when the enemy does their damage. So he gets to do an extra attack atop of his regular attack. Making him do two damage and killing his opponent. Play another 
land. Yeah, yeah. I can't do anything else, but I can now attack. It's our chance to attack Crimson Mage. You just click on it to auto attack the opponent. Because he doesn't have any creatures to block with, Crimson Mage will take three points of damage. I probably should have skipped the tutorial, but because <laughs> I can explain it all while I play. You don't have any spells that you can cast for now, so let's pass the turn. For the most part, anyways. There's some mechanics I don't understand too well, just because I've never used them that much. Like um, the re the regeneration mechanic, I've never really used it. I've had cards with it, but I never actually used it. Um, back to turn of Able. Just combat damage gets a 1 1 counter. Uh, yeah, it's not good. But. Hello! <laughs> Time to attack! Send your Colonian Tusker into combat. Remember that you can't attack with your Rumbling Bailoff yet, because it has summoning sickness. Yep. However, you can use it to defend. So, you have two choices. You got two main phases in the game. You can choose to put down units in either phase. Um, but, unless you put them before your combat stage, if they have some kind of ability that lets them attack when they first get sent out, there is an ability, I think, for that. Um, unless you have that, you it doesn't matter where you put them at, unless they have an ability you want to use. It's important to know that in magic, you can only decide that your creatures are attacking an opponent. You don't have control over which of your opponent's creatures will block. Yeah, so they can choose whatever creatures to block whichever creature. So say they got a high level stuff, some low level stuff. They don't want the high level stuff to get destroyed because of it matching with yours. So they use the low level stuff to block you. Unless they can think they can buff up the low stuff. Unless the card says otherwise, blocked creatures deal all damage to the creatures that blocked them. No damage is dealt to the defending player. Blocking with small creatures to not take any damage is sometimes a good strategy. Yeah, the only exception to that rule is if the creature has trample. Trample will go through the blocking of any damage excess. Kind of like piercing in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, you know, I cannot um, block with my Tusker, but I can block my Baylor. This time, we're gonna try something a little different. Instead of playing your land and casting a spell before combat, wait until after combat. Now, attack with both of your creatures. Normally, you just attack with a Baylor because Baylor is stronger than his unit. But if you attack with Tuscar, he can match it and kill it. It looks like Crimson Mage has decided not to block with his Bloodrock Cyclops. So he'll take seven damage. Awesome. Yeah, that's one thing. Two, putting units and stuff out in your second phase is that you can think make your opponent think that you're attacking with all your stuff and leaving you defenseless. Like, you think, make them think you don't have anything you can put down. Granted, there's also spells, so... Actual spells. Main phase after combat, go ahead. You'll be in great shape to win if you cast this creature. Freaking 3-7. For just 5 mana. That's insane. Mage will play a land and attack. Things are looking good. Seriously, that's an insane card. Just for 5 mana. I've seen 5 mana cards that are like 3 ones. it's crud, so... 3-7. And that will also kill his creature and allow me to win next turn, basically. Because I have 3, 6, 10. All so I can, yeah. Is attack with everything. Which I can click heal to attack with all automatically. And I win. Unless he has some kind of spell to kill a creature. But by this point, you've pretty much won otherwise. 
Now, when we play against a real opponent, it's going to get a lot harder. In Quest 2, we'll spice up the battle with other kinds of spells. Now, how long has I been recording for? I don't know. 15 minutes. Okay, we'll go through a another tutorial mission. So we'll do two missions per, depending on how um, slow they are. Yeah. So let's do the second one, and then that'll be this episode. In addition to summoning creatures, you use the mana from your lands to cast spells, one time so which are sorceries. They can have a variety of immediate effects, but once you use them, that's For it. For second quest, you'll be using a black deck. Black specialty <coughs> is removing your opponent's creatures. Your opponent is Azure Mage. Yeah, each deck has its own specialty, but then when you combine decks, you get all kinds of crazy stuff. We combine colors. This game already in progress. As you can see, a lot of dueling has gone on so far. But with no creatures on the battlefield, it'll take a miracle to survive the next few turns. It's Azure Mage's turn, and she attacks with her last remaining creature, bringing your life total to two. Yep. I think there's also challenges you can play, kind of like the Yu-Gi-Oh and so on, where you get a pre-made thing, and you gotta figure out how to win in less turn. So if you in one turn, basically, use one turn to use all your stuff to win. You've drawn assassinate a sorcery. Sorceries are cards intended to be used a single time. Uh, well, my cat just got distract distracted me. Sorry. Yeah. So, you can use it on any of your phases. Assassinate is a card that can destroy a creature of your choice, as long as it's tapped. Since yep. you're at two life, you- Boom, and now I'll survive until I get a creature now, or something else. Now, <laughs> will cast some spells. Divination allows the player to draw two cards, a signature blue spell. Yeah, blue is specialized in deck management. They can very quickly get the cards out and everything. Um, and they're pretty heavily heavy reliant on spells. Red is um, fast attacking and offensive magic. Green is the gigantic creatures. Um, Black is for removal and kind of like infinite um, weak armies, because there's a lot of uh, black decks about zombies. Um, whites are kind of um, buffing, and um, is that all the colors? Is that all five? Yeah. Then there's non-colors. You can get artifacts and stuff from that. My big kitty cat likes to be a little butt. Now your opponent has Ooh, a creature a that has a special ability. Zoom in on the card to flying, so you can't be blocked unless you have a reach or flying. Let's look at his card too. You draw two cards, and this one, yeah. Without another assassinate card, you have no way to destroy Azure Mage's Windrake. What will you do to stay alive? Oh, pretty easy, actually. Because that's got the Night Nighthawk. Flying, so he can block his, the opponent. Death Touch, so his, his he dies no matter how much damage. And Life Link, I get more health. And my guy is stronger naturally. So, triple ability. <laughs> You won't attack because of it. Ooh, a sphinxy. Now you're in serious trouble. That Goliath Sphinx can kill you with one hit. But the good news is that your vampire Nighthawk can kill any creature it deals damage to because it has death touch. Yeah, I'm going through pretty quickly, so that's okay. First two missions will be tutorials, basically, but that's okay. 
Now basically I'll finish it with him. And I'll use him to get me stuff. Decision. Do you attack with your vampire nighthawk? If you do, you won't have any untapped creatures to block the Goliath Sphinx with. Well, Okay, not pick it. I used to be, you used to be able to actually like decide if you want to attack a creature. I guess not. I will skip attack then. Make will he'll attack me, and I can use him to attack to block him and get health so he can't kill me. Now I'll block with my dude heal. It'll kill her sphinx and get me health. Both things die, but I get um, two more health, so I can survive an extra turn. You've drawn a powerful sorcery. Rise from the grave can reanimate creatures that are in a graveyard. Now's your chance to take that Goliath Sphinx as your own. Yep. Oh, only one creature. Oh, it's three. Never mind. Yes, now I got the Sphinx. Goliath. Yeah, even if he blocks, he'll lose his thing, so. And the next turn, you can finish it off with the Sphinx. Sorry if it's loud. I don't know the actual audio for it, so. Now swing in for the win. And that's the second tutorial. So, once we get out of here... We'll As you play end the video. Magic, you'll run into many kinds of spells and creature abilities. Look for spells that fit your play style. Yeah. In Quest 3, we'll learn about spells with more permanent effects. You choose which picture you want and everything. I chose um, this one for my profile because I'm a dragon person, okay? So, if I get the cards, I'll make a three colored deck for that. Now, That'll be it for this episode. We'll continue off next time. Goodbye.